All right, we are officially begun. So welcome. Um, as I've discovered online, these are my definitions for virtual reality, the computer-generated simulation of a three-dimensional image or environment that can be interacted with in a seemingly real or physical way by a person using electronic equipment, such as a helmet with a screen inside or gloves fitted with sensors. By way of contrast, augmented reality, a technology that superimposes a, a computer-generated image on a user's view of the real world, thus providing a composite view. Jason, I don't know if you can unmute. Can you just comment on that or anyone? But I'm going to pick on you, Jason, because you live in Silicon Valley, I think. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. OK. All right. Using some new headgear here, so I'm making sure it uh, <laughs> interfaces right. Um, yeah, I think the definitions are great. And uh, I would just maybe add to that, um, uh, just for our, our understanding, that uh, between the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality, um, although there are def different definitions, they are also linked in that um, virtual reality is a completely computer-generated environment that's immersive. So it's an enclosed experience is one way to describe it. Okay. And, and so your, the, the palette of, or the environment for interaction, rather, is, is completely enclosed, more like wrapping your arms around, or someone wrapping their arms around you, where augmented reality slides to the other end of the scale, where the digital world is painted on the, the real world around you. So it is an open experience, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, actually that was really helpful to me. Anybody else want to comment who, who, who would know? <laughs> say that one more time, how did you say that? Dig digital, what does it say, it, 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 it overlays or? Uh, yes, or, or um, uh, it's overlaid or in, in interconnects, I guess, with the world around you. Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. Very good. Aren't Google Glasses a representation of a form of augmented, you know, reality? If that's a help helpful. Um. Yeah, but it doesn't. Uh, it, it Google Glass is a a, a very early um, failed. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it's more of a information in front of your face. Uh. So, but it really doesn't connect with the world around you. So augmented reality, the digital images would actually connect with, uh, somehow interface with the world that you're seeing. Now, so, so can you give an example real quickly? Uh, for example, <clears throat> um, uh, it, it really even changes the way advertising will be done in the future, where instead of uh, looking through your car window, for example, I'm taking this about maybe... 15, 25 years into the future here, looking through your uh, car windshield, instead of seeing a building, the building is now a billboard with a giant Coca-Cola bottle. Hmm. It looks like a Coca-Cola bottle. So, uh, so it takes the actual, it recognizes the image, the world around you, and then overlays it with digital information or interaction. Wow. wow. So what is, what's the Tom Cruise movie there? What was that one called? Minority Report, I think. Right? There you go. So sort of a la mm -hmm. Minority Report then, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, anybody else before we move on want to comment on that? Super helpful, Jason. So I think what I'm going to have you do, and I, I'll do the best I can, uh, and I'm okay. I'm actually pretty good at this, and maybe, I don't know, Carissa, if in addition to monitoring the chat box, you can... Chris, are you able to jump into this document and help me kind of co-scribe? Is that a possibility? Um, I can check. I don't. Have you shared it with me? I or made it. I made it open, and oh, I put the link in there. Thing. So let me see. Just click on that and see if that works. Um, but go ahead. Why don't you tell us? And here's what I'm looking because right now we have 19 participants. I'm talking like 30 to 40. Let me. Let me. I'll go first. Um, here's what I want: is who you are, really bullet points. So. And then, and then once we kind of get everybody introduced, then we'll have more interaction and dialogue. Um, but it's, so it's Clyde Tabor. I'm with the Visual Story Network. I'm in Southern California. My area of interest is connecting people who have an interest in this part of the kingdom, potentially, um, because as I wrote in my email, I think this is going to be a huge, huge game changer. And in the Visual Story Network, we try to help the body of Christ 
kind of incarnate in a visual way, and there's probably not a more visual way than augmented or virtual reality. So there's me. So how about you, Jason? Tell us, just give us a blurb on you. Sure. Um, I, I am, uh, first of all, an evangelist and a pastor. Uh, so I've lived in, uh, as a missionary evangelist to Southeast Asia, East Asia, for 11 years. And the Lord called me to San Jose to start a church. And in that journey as well, I got entwined with the digital universe <laughs> um, and uh, some uh, brothers in the Lord. Uh, we intersected in that part, as part of that journey. And uh, so I'm representing a, a company from Indonesia. It's called WIR. And we do augmented reality solutions. It's a branding company that has embraced virtual reality and augmented reality. And so I'm opening up their U.S. territory for them as I work for Jesus. And you're up there in Silicon Valley somewhere? San yeah. Jose? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Jose. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to pick on, just because this is so I can see, whoever is 352-728-1414 phone number. Who are you? Uh, this is Art Aris, Kingstone Comics. Ah, I love you, Art. Hey, it's good to hear your voice, even though I can't see your face. So did you, you catch uh, that? So you can give us your little blurb? Sure. Well, I just flew in late last night from Cincinnati. Uh, well, like Jason, I'm an evangelist and I'm a pastor, and I'm also CEO of Kingstone Comics. And we've got the most complete graphic adaptation of the Bible that's ever been done. All of our artists are Marvel and DC type guys, uh, that kind of history. We've got a complete animation of, it, of the Bible that's coming out. We have a real passion for visual Bible engagement. Um, it's going to be announcing pretty soon. We just uh, yesterday finished up. Uh, we're doing the United Bible Societies, all the Bible Societies all over the globe have just jumped on big time uh, with the Kingstone Bible. We were up at the um, World Assembly with all of the Bible Societies all over the world, and the guy that's the head of digital publishing for UBS. Um, Who is he, that, by gosh, the way? His name, he's Brazilian. His name is Nelson Sabah. Okay, I don't know. And He's, he's brilliant. He's a great guy. Uh, he was a guy that did the Globe Bible that was very successful. Got it. So anyway, um, they, I've thrown this out with the Bible societies. You know, we have a Bible engagement continuum, and that obviously will include, hopefully at one point, VR. So we're keenly interested to hear what you guys have to say. All right. Okay, very cool, very cool. And let me go over to um, Chris Height. Sure. I'm Chris. I'm uh, on the board of Visual Story, so uh, here to basically support Clyde in the effort, and I've been chatting with him for the last six months about just this this wave of VR that I think is going to be a complete game changer if it's not already, and that uh, we a space that we need to, uh, to be talking in, so I'm excited to be here. Yeah, and by the way, I have to say, Chris was the catalyst for me, the colleagues kind of like finally saying, you know what, we got to do something here. So this is our first effort. Who knows where it all goes? Never despise the day of small beginnings, but thank you, Chris. Uh, so Zach King, tell us who you are. Unfortunately, not the final cut, King, sorry. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That's how he started. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, so my wife and I are missionaries with Reach Beyond, formerly HCJB Global World Radio. Got it. Uh, Past 85 years, Reach Beyond has predominantly been uh, radio focused, both in the last few years has been really um, trying to transition that focus to, to broader forms of media to spread the gospel. Um, so we are stationed in the UK, uh, currently actually in Romania. Um, we are, well, I guess, yeah, we um, are emerging media coordinators. So we help train partners and our staff on anything other than radio uh, that really Recently, it's taken the form of social media and video training, but um, yeah, as emerging media coordinators, we are the R&D department, um, so virtual reality has definitely been a big interest of ours recently, and so as somebody posed the question earlier, we are uh, not users, but we are interested and want to be users and creators. Yeah, so I think we'll figure that out as we go here, but I think at least... Some of some are actual doers and some are going to are wannabes and that's fine because it's just a new space. You know, there's always going to be the innovators and the early adopters and all of that. Uh, awesome, Zach. Glad you're on. Just uh, anyway, I'll move on. Okay, Tim, brother, how are you, dude? It's great to see you. Uh, hi, guys. Um, great to be here. 
My name is Tim Cowley and I work with Frontiers full-time doing media training and consultancy work as well as mobilization. Um, I've been working in Mozambique and Malawi for the past 13 years and just came back to the U.S. and so I'm now based in Portland, Oregon and um, have started a new nonprofit in which I try to place media professionals overseas with people who need them. And that's not just for my own mission, that's for any group or NGO that wants media professionals. So I have some young people in the sidelines that are hoping to find a good match for them. I say um, that again, what's the purpose? It's connecting, it's connecting people with opportunity? Yeah, it's connecting, say you have a college student who graduates and they're a video professional and they want to go overseas. That's and, right, that's right, okay. Yeah. So um, that's what I'm trying to do with Expat Media Pro, as well as consulting for organizations that want to learn how to do a better job at their own social media and video production and photography and that kind of advertising for their own organization. Just be sure uh, and put your URL in the <laughs> thing because I know I have it somewhere, but I'll grab it and we'll stick it in the notes later. It's on the, uh, e the email address where it says tim at expatmediapro.com as well. Awesome. Perfect. And um, so right now, I, I'm just, I'm not a user, but um, a mission organization approached me and said they want to do something in VR possibly. And I said, I've got no idea how to do anything. So I'm just on here trying to learn. Nice. Okay. Well, and that's certainly me and I'm sure some of us here. So uh, Jesse from Crew. Yes. Hi. You're on. A, yeah. So I got a degree in computer animation and visual effects. And so I love post-production, the post-production world. I love playing with um, technology and video and, um, yeah, manipulating it. And it's just a lot of fun. And um, my wife and I just finished our, um, we were in full-time support uh, mode for a while. And so we just finished and I just jumped back in the office. And uh, Finch Sprouse, who was on here, kind of connected me with um, the work that crew's doing with a lot of the 360 video stuff. And, um yeah, I would. Yeah, so he helped connect me and get me on board, and I'd love to help um, create a lot of the 360 videos and make them look a little more interesting. Make them look virtual reality worthy, um, like adding text that floats over people's heads while they look around, so they know what they're looking at or something like that. And so, yeah, I'd love to just kind of. Right now, I feel like my toes are just getting wet, and but I'd love to dive in and yeah, learn how to create more of this stuff and so students could actually look at where they could potentially go for a mission trip and get like really excited about it um, instead of just reading about it or seeing a picture it's like they could actually look and kind of like a virtual reality tour of like the mission possibilities or something yeah very very cool okay and let's go with joshua and oh oh christian vision hey so joshua and i don't know can't figure out all your names but joshua i can figure uh, out your name. i'm kado i'm the other mysterious bonus <laughs> <laughs> kado jerschek yeah we're with, with cv uh we're a global organization that uh really we seek to share the gospel with everyone um in our region we're tasked with reaching north america uh we first got into 360 Video, the Highlight 360 video uh, for Harvest North America, and uh, been really jumping in ever since. We have several tutorials on our uh, YouTube channel on how to use AutoPano and AutoPano Gig and uh, the Skybox plugins for After Effects. Um, um, really, just have a heart for sharing the gospel uh, with the world. And 360 video we're finding is one of the best ways to be able to be involved with social media and do that. All right, I love that. I'm sorry, please tell me your name, Joshua, and then? Cado. Can you spell that for me? Oh, like yeah. Cado. Yeah, <laughs> C-A-D-E-A-U. Yes, 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 Cado. Okay, uh, do you speak French, the wonderful, beautiful yeah. language? I do not. <laughs> no, okay, but there are I several, several of us in this phone call, we know how to speak that language. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> okay, I think next is Fitch. Fitch. Go ahead. Yeah, my name's Finch Brown. I've been on staff with Crew for 27 years. How could you be on staff that long and I didn't know you, dude? So I guess you would have come behind me. I was on staff. Okay, never mind. We're, okay, keep going. Sorry. Okay, bro. No, that's, that is a bummer. I didn't know you. Um, nice to meet you, though, Clyde. I work with Jesse and a bunch of others. Uh, Larry Stevens, you, got, you probably know. I work with Crew's Global Missions arm, and I've kind of been running point on the digital strategy side. So with web content and trying to 
uh, synchronized. We, every region has their own website, so we're trying to get them all under crew.org so people can find us easier. And then the other thing I do is the video production for any of our global missions marketing videos that we do. And so I came across the 360 stuff in February and have been generating content like crazy. We're hoping we're going to be, by the end of the summer, we'll have video content from 21 different countries, every continent except Antarctica, um, that we're going to have content for. And we're working with uh, a guy named Casey Sapp, uh, who's going to do a lot of the post-production for us to put together. We're hoping to put together a three-minute promo that we can put at every one of our Christmas conferences. So it'll, it'll you know, be shown to about 10,000 students. And ideally, we're going to have 100 to 200 sets of cardboard goggles at each conference so students can watch them, you know, in the, in the, with the, the feeling, the, the immersive feel. And then if they sign up for summer mission for study abroad or to go for a year, we're going to give them the goggles, say, hey, go back to campus, show all your buddies, recruit them to come with you. Dude, that's so radical. I just love that. Way to innovate, bro. So are you Orlando-based? No, I'm actually in Springfield, Missouri. So how did, how did you not get sucked? I mean, there's a great giant sucking sound, and I, I, I got sucked out to Orlando. It, I know. So far, well, I'm, that's, that's actually just part of my job. My other job is I'm the Great Plains uh, Global Missions guy. Oh, so, mean it for campus, for the campus side. Exactly. Oh, very nice do, to meet I you. I do basically two full-time jobs, uh, but I love, I love more of the digital strategy one. So that's, that's what I wake up, think about every morning. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Carissa, tell us, give us a shout out. Hey. <laughs> no, give us more than that. Tell us about oh. you. Um, I'm here in uh, Denver, Colorado, and I'm uh, helping Clyde right now with uh, putting together these webinars and doing admin stuff, but I'm a freelance graphic designer slash art director slash project manager. <laughs> so. And who knows, maybe a virtual reality specialist in the future. Maybe, who never, knows? You never know. This could be a <laughs> life-changing meeting for you. All right, Professor Tom Custer, how are you? Can you give us a shout out, unmute, and then tell us something about you? It's great to see you. Here, and you got it, you're unmuted. There we go, yeah. Yeah, Tom Custer uh, from the Christ and in Media Institute at Bethany Lutheran College in Mankato, Minnesota. Our task is to uh, try to keep up with what's going on uh, and then pass on that information to others we know who would be interested in contributing. And so that's what we're doing today. We learn a lot from you guys. We appreciate that. And uh, so we're just learning. Okay. So, yeah. So I haven't really thought, I mean, just trying to get your head around the curve. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. I'm going to pick on Paul Konstansky. Paul, can you give us a shout out? Yeah, I work with Crew. I've uh, been here a long time, 35 some years. Work in, out of the Global Leadership Office. Also have been connected to Clyde as a part of the Visual Story Network pretty much since its inception and beginning. Love tracking with what's going on. I also have an interest kind of in the digital world. One of the big questions that we want to wrestle with is just how far you can take a person online in the, in the digital world in terms of giving them basic follow-up without personal coaching, you know, kind of a self-help type thing. And I could potentially see how some of these approaches of virtual or augmented could kind of fit into some of that in some respects. Um, but that's kind of my connection and why I'm here. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome. And then Peter, is it Peter Brasington? It, Brasington, close Brasington. enough. Okay, okay, got and it. Here we are. I'll uh, cut and paste what I put in earlier. Oh, if okay. That That'd be great. Perfect. That there you go. Help me out. Yes. Okay. Now just tell us about you. So I uh, work with uh, SIL Eurasia uh, on the digital engagement, which covers just about um, anything digital, really. Uh, so I've been exploring all things new and how they can be used for the kingdom, mainly with a focus on uh, scripture engagement in minority languages. Um, I've also recently been exploring sort of games and ethno-gamification. We've had this idea about uh, ethnomusicology for a while. Now I need to think sort of games and how they apply to different cultures. Like, can uh, you comment on that for a second? Like 20 seconds. What does that mean? Give us a look. Uh, well, we're, we're, people are starting to think more in terms of how to make better use of games for the, the kingdom. But right. in the same way that uh, we've recognized that Sometimes you need to change uh, your message a bit on your movies. You need to recognize that culture has an effect on how people understand things. 
I think we need to do the same with some of our games, recognize some uh, value of indigenous games and uh, where we're, we're making sort of cultural gaps if we're not careful. Uh, some wonderful stories of somebody else doing uh, uh, just development work, had some great uh, simulation games uh, and then discovered that once she started using dice in this particular location, she completely lost her audience. Interesting. Fascinating. And, and what's your like scope? I mean, are you thinking Europe or like what's your territory for digital engagement? Oh, Eurasia. I'm sorry. I just I see that now. Yeah, Eurasia, but uh, chatting to lots of people uh, worldwide. So I've uh, got uh, some other colleagues uh, working in uh, South America. Um, I'm interested in knowing what's happening everywhere because um, the internet doesn't really seem to recognize sort of geography. In the same yes, yes, yes. And you're based where? Based in the UK. I got it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Steve Bauman, my brother. Love you, dude. Great to see you. You're my beautiful French friend. Tell us about you. That's right. I am in France right now and my wife and I just celebrated 30 years of living in Africa, North Africa and France. Um, we are with SIL Wycliffe. I'm the Eurasia Area Coordinator for Scripture Engagement, which means that I'm here to hear any of your ideas that you have and find out ways that we can apply those to our on-the-ground Bible translation teams so that we can get the scriptures used in Eurasia, all those limited access countries. Think anything from Morocco all the way over to Pakistan and all the way up into the Stan all the Stan regions, all those uh, hard limited access regions. I am also the chairman of the, what's called EMDC. Yeah. And you are now all officially on the mailing list unless you tell me otherwise. And um, <clears throat> uh, of course, Nelson Sabah has come to that. And so is United Bible Society Reach Beyond has been there. CV had the Richard Daniel there. Tim Cowley has been there. Of course, Liam's in this. Clyde was a speaker once there. So Paul Konstansky, he's, he, he, he basically got us on the map. So a lot of guys know me on this, this group. But the other guys who don't, who are practitioners in this whole virtual reality, I'll be in touch with you to see what you can contribute to Eurasia. Thanks. Yeah. So where, how many countries does Eurasia cover for SIL, uh, Steve? Yeah, well, we we say in the twenties. We don't like to get specific. I even right. actually said I even actually said some words I'm really not supposed to say, but um, you know, Oops. I realize I've got a safe audience here. But um, got it. except that, that it's that, going that's public. Our, that's our footprint. Everything that's um, you know in the area I described earlier. All right, all right, great, great, great. And let me see. I'm just kind of going through, and then we got Jason. Hey, Liam, brother. Okay, I just sorry I can't see everybody here at once. So, Liam, tell us about you. Hey Clyde, it's good to see you. Um, so my name is Liam Savage. I'm with One Hope. Uh, I am the uh, design strategist in innovation for ministry design. I try to uh, help bridge the gap between what One Hope does, which is um, scripture engagement with children and youth uh, all over the world, um, and try to help us do that with technology well. Um, so um, regarding augmented reality and virtual reality, um, I have been developing a platform for scripture engagement uh, through augmented reality for the past 18 months or so. And I'm hoping that that'll be able to launch soon so that content producers like you guys can start uh, deploying content with augmented reality uh, for churches for people to engage with. Can you tell us what the working title of that project is? It is Traverse. Like T-R-A-V-E-R-S-E? -E? That's correct. Okay, and then when do you hope that that'll go live? Soon. Uh, the company that's developing it is a startup, um, and so they're, uh, they're, they've been working really hard. And so it's, I mean, originally it was supposed to be done in a few months, but they've completely rebuilt their platform because I told them, you know, One Hope is going to be using this in 120 countries, and we've got scale, we've got millions of people. So they're like, yeah, our platform can't support that. And I'm like, well, it needs to. So they've, um, they've got a, um, a CTO who's a guy from Apple who basically helped build the, the iTunes store. And so it's like they've got uh, the right stuff going on now. So I'm hoping within the next um, two or three months, I'll have a platform that's been tested and uh, able to start deploying content. Um, other than that, really interested in the virtual reality space, um, developing content like you guys have been talking about already, uh, immersive gospel presentations. Um, right. uh, just at E3 uh, two weeks ago and um, 
or E3 is the Electronic Entertainment Expo. Oh, okay. Right, right. And, um, not, the minis- not the ministry, E3. No, 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 different. And uh, so it's really big. Uh, virtual reality has, is going to have a big effect on gaming. And because it's having a big effect on gaming, that's just going to mean that more people have access to really good hardware to experience things. And so um, it was cool to see some of the, the interface that's being designed. So um, the ways that you can not only like look around in a virtual reality world, but interact with the virtual reality world. So um, it'll be exciting. Way cool. By the way, I forgot to mention that the thing that truly qualifies me to facilitate this is that my son's good friend Caleb was in a homeschool group with Palmer Lucky. So how's that? That's like... Nice. There you go. There's some swagger. Antoine, brother, how are you, man? I haven't seen you in a long time. Tell us, uh, tell us something about you. Uh, tell us, anyway, just you go. <laughs> hey, folks. Uh, my name is Antoine Wright. I um, founded a magazine called Mobile Ministry Magazine about 13 years ago. And I've been doing stuff at the front of mobile technology as it integrates with every type of ministry effort imaginable. So in some way, shape, or form, I've probably talked to all of you at yes. least twice in the last decade plus. Or a hundred um, times or, in the case of me. Yeah, yeah. Um, currently, um, I do a lot of things. I'm currently in office right now as a UX designer for a very large umbrella company to a bunch of staffing companies, um, global staffing company, nice. playing with Salesforce and all of that really good fun stuff. Um, in terms of AR, VR, I'm actually working on a little bit different track than many of you are who might be building environments and building um, and such of that sort. But I'm actually going down the identity and payments track. Um, how does uh, moving into an augmented virtual reality space change or augment or disrupt um, what we consider as identity? And so to that end, i um, been doing a few experiments, uh, a few of which will come publicish hopefully wow. in the next 12 months. Wow, this that is a, will ahead. really allow that discussion to, yeah, kind of go forward. So um, that my, my, my life after Mobile Ministry Magazine, if you will. Wow. <laughs> wow. Dude, great to hear you, see you. Okay, thank you. That was awesome. Mike, uh, tell us about you. I saw Mike. Hi, I'm uh, Mike Hartman. I'm a world missionary with the Wisconsin Lutherans. I've been in Mexico for 17 years, and I serve as a their strategic coordinator for Latin America. We are using we are focused on using mobile technology to do church planting in Latin America, uh, mainly Academia Cristo, Iglesia Cristo, and, and so we're focused on that. And people I've been talking to a lot recently have really pushed me to say I, I'm the strategic coordinator. I'm the idea guy that gets things started, and they've been pushing me to find out more about augmented reality. So I am a wannabe who's here to find out what are possibilities. Amen, amen. Hey, thrilled, thrilled that you're here. Uh, and then I saw Melissa. Melissa, I haven't seen you in forever. Can you say something like who you are, where you are, and what your interest is? Hi. Oh, <laughs> I joined. My- Gosh, I'm just so excited. Melissa was a, an intern for me about what? About 100? No, no, you're not that old. I uh, mean, I, no, it's been a while. Like it's been when a while. we're in first or second year, so seven or eight years ago. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I, I got the reminder on my email, and um, I do some marketing right now. Um, so I'm kind of at work, and I wanted to join in. And then all of a sudden, the camera came up, and I was like, oh, I need to get it. <laughs> but um, I'm excited to be a part of this. I'm uh, doing a lot of marketing uh, in the States, but then also internationally. I'm getting ready to go to Thailand for two weeks uh, here in a couple weeks and uh, just still involved, still loving what you guys are doing and uh, glad to still be a part, uh, especially since being here involved in the beginning like eight yes. years ago so <laughs> wow. so what's your interest in in, in in audio or augmented or virtual reality um honestly i'm just wanting to learn more i'm wanting to see what we're doing and i'm wanting to see where the the trends are going and where god's taking everything to be All honest right. so, awesome to learn. well yeah. hopefully hopefully something good will come out of this oh irv's in okay sorry irv i think you were the first guy in okay i've got some notes from your email here irv but uh tell us about you Hey, Clyde. I'm uh, here at beautiful Rollins College working on a theology class this week, but yeah, with crew here in Orlando, Jesus Film. And um, yeah, we um, 
some of the projects having worked on and animation and Autodesk 3D Maya, we've got a little R&D effort going using um, volunteers primarily, some former Disney people and electronic arts guys and trying to take a storyboard we did about seven years ago on the Gathering Demoniac and translate that into Unreal Engine and view it on the Oculus, but kind of experiment new ways of doing animation and also having that be some kind of interactive environment where you know you could be on the beach and interact and see this moment play out and um, but it's just a little internal kind of proof of concept effort at the moment to dip our toe into that nice and you guys but yeah and i saw i can't remember because i've seen a number of emails but you're kind of working with a couple of different players there i mean because are you connected with liam on something also no, 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 it was Larry. Larry, Larry was telling me that you were involved with something Larry's doing. Yeah, our Jesus Film office, we got a 3D camera rig, and so we've been working a lot with Larry, and we're testing it for our purposes, maybe. Have a but me and Irv, we're really good friends. All right. Yeah, yes. no, I love Irv. I'm, well, the, I love all of you, even though I don't know all of you, but I know many of you. Awesome. And then did I get Casey? I don't think we've gotten Casey yet. Hey, guys. This is uh, Casey Sapp. I am in San Diego, California. I apologize. I'm on the road right now. Um, I grew up in Orlando, so and I've met a, a number of the guys involved with Crew. Uh, for the last year, I uh, have been running a virtual reality production company. We're a team of five, and um, I, at this time, I'm the only um, like-minded uh, believer in the group. But we have uh, we work specifically with brands, and uh, some of our clients are Google, GoPro. World, um, wow. we're doing some consulting with Crew. Uh, our main revenue source is 360 video. We have built some of our own cameras, and we've had projects from five thousand to one hundred fifty thousand dollars just to make a little 360 video. And then we're starting to um, also build brand experiences on the Vive. And uh, and it, we've had a lot of bike shops actually who um, want to sell bikes and create a retail experience. Um, and then today we will uh, enable live streaming. So we'll have a, a live streaming 360 camera that connects to apps, headsets, and, um, and we're going to start doing medical operations starting July 15th. Um, Whoa. so yeah, we're there. VR means a lot of different things and, and it can mean game development. It can mean live action. Um, and so we're trying to really focus on, you know, what is the most cost effective, um, technology, uh, that we can provide to, to brands that's not, you know, AR may be, the HoloLens I think is uh, $3,000. So it's not necessarily consumer ready, but the stuff that is consumer ready, um, we're really going hard. And so, yeah, lastly, I, I care a ton about crew. I care a ton about missions. We're trying, at least myself, I'm trying to give as much of my time um, to help these guys get off the ground and try stuff. And uh, yeah, I look, look forward to just getting connected with everyone. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome to have you here. And then, oh, I saw somebody I've missed. Nicole, Nicole, can you tell us about you? In the chat, she said she's at work with no video or microphone. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine then. Have I gotten everybody here? Because I'm, I've, okay, here's, let me do this. I'm going to go off or stop screen sharing um, so I can see the gallery view once again. Okay, so fascinating. I'm going to do kind of an open up and, and, and maybe, Carissa, you can peruse the chat comments to see if there are any questions that we want to raise here in the limited time that remains. But I'm fascinated to see everyone. And um, I guess my first question is, and I'll just pose this to you, Casey, is what is 360 video? Is that virtual reality or is that <coughs> augmented reality? Um, so, you know, virtual reality, I like to say, is, is taking someone to a place and immersing them in uh, as Jason said, you know, computer generated comment. And then augmented reality is taking that data uh, and taking that place to you and, and bringing that onto your actual space. And, um, you know, I think the, the buzzword is virtual reality. And when I see a lot of the, the articles about, 360, uh, about virtual reality, it's really 360 video. Uh, and so I really want to delineate, uh, at least with our clients, the difference between 360 video, which is passive, it's a passive experience. It still gives you very immerse, uh, immersive experience. And then there is like game development, six degrees of freedom, walking around. And that's true virtual reality. That's the ability to pick up things, interact with things. And, and, and so, you know, I don't think personally that 360 video is virtual reality, but I still think that um, it is a very, very important part of immersive uh, experience. So it's, it's somewhere, it's a hybrid. It's, you're saying it's not either? 
Yeah, I, I would actually delineate 360 video, virtual reality, and augmented reality as, as three different things. And actually in the market, um, augmented reality actually has a negative connotation and people are starting to call it MR, uh, mixed reality. And that would be Magic Leap, that would be Microsoft HoloLens. They're, they're, they're calling those actually mixed reality headsets more than they're, they're calling them augmented reality headsets. Because? Um, I think the, the Google Glass, uh, kind of, kind of ruined it for everybody, and it, <laughs> it, it, it kind of ruined it, it for me. Yeah, and and so, uh, you know, mixed reality actually allows you to play a 360 video in an actual live environment space, uh, and and so it, it is kind of this kind of weird world of being able to put live action video in an actual environment or taking animations and digital structures, um, you know, CAD models of a bike or, or something into that live environment. So I think AR and MR are very similar. Uh, I think MR is probably more the buzzword than AR. Um, but, you know, they're, they're all very different. Uh, or they're all a little bit different, I apologize. Okay, and here, and I'm just gonna, uh, Carissa, are there any questions that you wanna, can you identify in the chat box that you wanna, that, that just you wanna interject, but I'm gonna keep going, and maybe Chris Hyde, if you have a thought or question, and then we'll open it up to anyone. Um, so, like, in terms of places to go and learn in a, in a broader space, is the E3 place the best to go at this point, would you say, um, or, I mean, Casey or whoever, anybody? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll this will be my last comment. I apologize for, for talking so much. Um, I was at E3, and E3 is great for gamers, uh, and PlayStation and Xbox, and there was another, uh, there was OSVR, they're about to release. Uh, and I would say that really NAB, and specifically CES is where you want to be. Uh, and so if you're in the virtual reality world, CES is the beginning of January every year. It's in Las Vegas, and, and it, NAB has kind of the new cameras for live action. Uh, but I would say E3 is probably more maybe like a top 10 conference, uh, more than, you know. And then VRLA is coming up in August. Uh, Silicon Valley VR, a lot of these local meetups in the U.S. have thousands of people, tens of thousands of people and, and exhibitors. And, and the co tickets are only maybe like $40. So I would say if, if you can go make it to VRLA, that is way better than E3. Wow. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, I would also want to throw out there that um, you go might ahead. want to look at Mobile World Congress. Um, Barcelona and Singapore, both of them uh, had small VR offsite events last year, this year, this past year. Um, it's looking to be pretty big going into next year. So those would be uh, uh, opportunity as well. Mobile World Congress. All right. Thank you, Antoine. So, Chris, is there anything in there that you want to highlight from the chat? Uh, at this point, oh, there, the only question was from Chris about um, Oculus being compatible with Apple iOS. So it's more of a technical question, if anybody knows the answer to that. Anybody want to comment? Um, so far as I know, its only compatibility is with um, Microsoft uh, and PC computers. Okay. Um, Okay, great. So floor is open. I mean, I don't know. Anybody want to comment, question? I mean, there's, you know, the, this is kind of this virtual handshake. Um, if, I, if I do a 360 in my chair, does that make us like mixed reality? Like, uh, sorry, that was my attempt to be funny. But um, so, yeah, anybody comments, questions? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just processing. Everybody's doing some interesting things. Like, okay, so clearly like crew, you're working a little bit more in the space of um, mobilization. So there's there's obviously going to be all kinds of apps. When you in the for profit sector, you're going to have, um, you know, you're going to have marketing. You're going to have uh, whatever. I mean, there's a thousand ways that integrated in the faith based space. I mean, right now it sounds like cruise thinking mobilization. Then the other category that I hear is like evangelism, and then maybe you know, like Mike or whoever it is there in Mexico. Maybe at some point this will lead to church planning movements, but that's probably a little bit further down the road. So staying in sort of the, the nonprofit faith-based space, let me ask, um, I think it was Finch, like why did you guys start with mobilization and do you see yourselves going even to like, you know, win, build, send with that? So I'll, I'll go to you, Finch. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, for me, a big part of my role is, is kind of marketing our global missions opportunities. Uh, we're trying to get to what we call the, uh, the like-minded uninvolved student. 
a lot of the Christian college students, a lot of the students are just, you know, in a good college, uh, uh, at a church that's got a good college ministry that they're thinking, gosh, I'd love to go do missions for a year. Uh, just don't know how to find and connect with crew because I've never heard of them. So we're trying to use the 360 to really give them, as Casey, I thought he did a good job distinguishing that between 360 VR and, and AR, that it's a passive, but it's immersive field where they can sit there and go, okay, I could be in South America. I could be sharing, you know, the solarium or, or some gospel presentation at a European cafe. I could be somewhere in Asia getting on a subway, going to campus, just kind of the, the feel of what that would be like to be in these different locations, you know, to be shopping at at an outdoor market in Africa and the normalization of it. So that's the main thing that that I'm focused on with crew, but I also think our fund development guys could use it. When we do these, these uh, fund development, you know, dinners, these fellowship dinners, you know, the, the campus director would be talking about, well, we got this Bible study going on with a football team. In my mind, how cool would it be to say, pick up your goggles. I want you to be inside. Now you're inside the locker room with the football team. You can hmm. see an offensive lineman. has got a big ice pack on his knee, his shoulder pads on the floor, his cleats and the dirt and all that, and he's got his Bible open. And then you see the, the staff guy that's, that's leading the Bible study. And over here's a running back and a quarterback. So it just gives you this sense of, gosh, this is what you guys are doing. So I think fund development could use it. I think there's all kinds of ways. As Irv was talking about the way Jesus Film is, is taking advantage of it. So I think there's just a lot more things that we can keep doing. Uh, just ideas need to keep generating. But um, – yeah, that's just a little start. Okay. Anybody else want to com- comment on the mobilization side? Or maybe I want to ask a little bit more about on the, like the, the, the outreach side. But any, anybody want to comment on that? Um, I will say this, Clyde. One of the things I've found is right now, it's where it, the, the VR stuff, the 360 stuff, is kind of ahead of technology. Uh, when I show students, a lot of students, they, they may be seen it, but they've not seen anything in goggles. And so they're really kind of blown away. And it's an attractiveness to them. In a couple of years, it may not have that cool factor that it does now. Right. That's why I'm really pushing to try to get something done for all of our Christmas conferences, because it'll be cool today, two years later, you know, unless you've got extras and, you know, a lot more of the VR feel, it probably won't, the 360 won't be as, as fascinating to them. And right now you're talking, uh, okay, so help me out really quickly. So like I, I watched one of the 360 videos, maybe I think it was one of yours from Africa. So, you know, you can literally with your, you need a mobile device, you know, a tablet or a phone to kind of do the 360 thing. You, I mean, theoretically, you couldn't do that on a laptop or could you? Well, you can, but you got to use your mouse to spin around. It's not nearly as, as uh, enjoyable. Um, I see. And then when you put it in a goggle, so yeah, you can, you can do that. So, you know, I got, I shot video going down the world's tallest water slide. Uh, I've, I've got some connections to that, that water park there. And, uh, and I use that as a hook. Are you ready for the adventure of your lifetime? And then shoot, you know, over to some guy having a you know, quiet time in Dominican Republic while the sun rises over the beach. Um, so all that sort of thing. But it looks, when you put it in the goggles, it kind of takes away the peripheral vision. Is that, is that the benefit of it then yeah. in, in the go- – oh, okay. Yeah, really feel, you feel like you're right there. You feel like you're either right there inside that van on the way to campus, inside that subway, uh, standing right next to the world's tallest building or whatever it is. You feel like you're standing right there. Now, is that because it's just because you're enclosed and you're, you lose and limit your periphery, or is it because there's also a lens that augments it in some way? No, I, th- I think – in case you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's more just that – takes away all the peripheral vision so you feel like you're right there so all you're seeing is just that that particular video inside and because you can look around you can see the floor you can see the sky you can see everywhere you, you feel like you're right there but there is a lens. yeah i mean I'll, I'll i'll just add an additional comment um you know the the gear vr which is used with the galaxy s6 or s7 phone has really high resolution it has its own interface for vr um and it gives you the best sense of presence on a mobile device rather than the, the Vive or the Oculus Rift. Say that again. Um, I've done Which a lot of research. It? It's called the Samsung Gear VR, and uh, they're, they're even including it now with all the Galaxy phones going forward. Uh, if you don't already have one, you have a Galaxy phone. Uh, it's like $99. Um, I've seen about five other pretty high, high-end headsets that are coming out in the next 6 to 12 months. Like mobile, um, the mobile best- headsets, right? Yeah, right. The best um, prosumer 360 camera is the Samsung Gear 360. And so for anyone who uh, it's just hitting the market right now. And so anyone who doesn't have a a 360 camera yet, it's the best 
um, solution with an auto stitch um, capability so you don't have to do all the post-production. Uh, but, but I've done a lot of research on this. I care a lot about education. Um, and I was in education in my 20s um, in software. And all the research says that in a virtual reality experience with the headset on, watching a video, you actually store it in a different part of your brain. Really? So you watch a video. Yeah, you, and you store it like an actual memory, like an actual experience. Oh. So when football players and athletes are practicing maybe a play um, and they're watching plays happen and they're reading defenses in a, in a headset, that's much different than watching it on game tape on a, on a screen. Uh, and so you're actually more prepared and more ready for that career and that skill set by passively watching it in a headset um, than if you had, uh, had just watched a video. And, and so that's why most NFL teams and, and, and uh, sports teams are moving this direction um, with quarterbacks and pitchers and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, and I really believe that most professions – there's a huge HR component. We'll have a, a some type of component to prepare people um, through VR before the, their first day of, of training, and that's what's happening in this medical um, industry that we're working on. So I think from a, a missions perspective, you know, there is the ability to feel like you're in these to identify with with a location or a group of people more than an actual video. But but from an educational perspective, I mean, it's the it, it's going to come slowly because education doesn't have as much money, um, but I think it's going to have the biggest impact. Whoa, you just bent my brain with that. That was, I didn't have no clue. And really quickly, Casey, so you said Samsung what VR? I'm trying to get this correct here. What was the name of the... Yeah, yeah so I, I mean, Google Cardboard is a great, you know, immersive, low-cost headset for any phone, but from a professional perspective and what we share with our clients and what we buy for them is a Samsung Gear VR. Gear, and, like G-E-A-R? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And it really is worth the cost if you've never tried one. And how much um, is that? Uh, for a used phone, maybe about 300 to $400. And then for a headset, about $100 at the max. And um, yeah, and, and I think, you know, Oculus Rift and HTC Vive are really great. But Gear VR has the most, um, has the most content. Oh, There's about Gear VR. There's a million oh, and a half VR. people. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there's about a million and a half people using it per month now around the world and uh, logging on and experiencing it, and it's doubling almost every month. Okay. Um, so it's, it's really, you know, the baseline for, um, for v what people would consider VR. Okay, thank you. By the way, so we're out of time, but I'm going to do this. Does anybody, like, final parting shots? I mean, this, again, I, what we'll do, I'm just trying, for me, I'm assuming for, most of, for many of us, it's like, hey, who's doing what? So you have a little bit of a, of a radar that hopefully you didn't have or a little bigger radar than you had before this. Um, you know, so hopefully you have some connections. If you want to talk to Casey or anybody here, what are you doing, crew? There's some interesting things happening. Um, so I'll just kind of go parting shots. Uh, Chris Height, by the way, do you have a parting shot, thought, comment? I lost Chris. I think Chris jumped off. All right. Um, go ahead. Who is that? Just go for it. It's, it's Liam. I was going to say, um, so regarding the platform that I'm developing, Traverse, um, you guys might want to start thinking about how you would deploy augmented reality content. So if you're thinking about um, scripture engagement, somebody had a question on chat about what do you do scripture engagement with VR. With AR as well, thinking about how a person's location affects the way that they receive content. Um, so for instance, it's like if you're talking about um, the Garden of Eden, uh, rather than just telling them that in a church, where's a local bo uh, botanical garden or a park or something where you could have them experience that content? Or if you know, it's Easter and Jesus appears before a crowd of 5,000 people, rather than just telling them that where's a place where they can see 5,000 seats and it's more experiential that it's like, wow, this many people as could fill this, this stadium were uh, witness to Jesus. So anyways, um, using location and uh, to distribute content um, and that content could be anything. I mean, you could have VR content be delivered when they get there. So anyways, um, when you, if you think about that, um, I, it's gonna be something that we wanna try to equip you with all right. Wow. Way, way cool. Anybody else? Parting shots, thoughts, thoughts, comments, whatever. Yeah, this is Antoine. Go ahead, Antoine. Um, yeah, so I, I know I mentioned, you know, that I'm looking at the ARVR from a totally different perspective than many yes. of you, and that's part of my course. 
Um, but I do want to kind of put that nugget in there that spatial orientation does, um, it, you know, to the comment earlier, we learn differently, we, we receive video differently. There's actually, there are some uh, psychological uh, data um, that's being unearthed from the 50s, basically, that's helping folks that are doing AR, VR, to kind of understand what's happening to us mentally when we get into this spatial environment. Not just how we're listening to stuff and how we're receiving it, but what it's actually doing to rewire um, our sense of being, our sense of identity. And so hence why I'm, I, I said I've run down the line of looking at financial tech and identity and all that good fun stuff as it relates to VR and AR. Um, because what you'll find is that as people get into these environments, much like they did in Second Life and other things, that they lose a sense of who they are. And they, they start to take on a sense of that environment. And so I would, I, would, I would just as much argue as you're creating this content that you would also start to dive down those lines and maybe uh, chat to your, you know, your local colleges who have really decent psychology, sociology programs. Uh, because yeah. the, 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 the truism is that people are going to use an augmented reality to escape from their real reality. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and while we can use it to, you know, push folks into the reality that is the Godhead, um, we want to also be kind of mindful that there is a there is an organic um, reality that we don't want them to, to, to misuse as well. But yeah, and, and then, you know, and I, I think you're leaning in a little bit in this direction, is obviously the enemy, the adversary, is a great early adopter, uh, if not an innovator. And so uh, he, he, he always finds an, a vanguard of people that will use it for purposes that are not, well, they're counter to who, what we would. There are some really cool support. hotels doing some very seedy things. Yeah, yeah, you don't even have to think very hard about where this could <laughs> Uh, okay, we're done. Unless there's one final, like, er, burning comment, thought, question. Anyone? Hey, Clive, this is Art. Um, are you going to send out an email uh, with all of us so we can connect with each other email? Yeah. Do, yeah, what I could do if for the people who've put the email, and I don't know, maybe between Chris and I we can figure this out in the chat box or in the, the thing, um, we'll assume that was your opt-in. So we're not, we'll send out a summary once we're done with creating a post to you guys. And then so we'll give you we'll we'll give you the emails that have been posted. Yes. That, that sounds good. All right. Perfect. Anybody else? Final thoughts, comments? All right. So here, I guess what I'll say this is like, hey, um, again, we're connector. We did something like this in the mobile space seven or eight years ago. Antoine was there, like, you know, and now that's that's grown to be kind of a huge network around the world. I'm not saying this could become that, but I'm interested in enough and I think it is like it is the next mobile revolution. Uh, that who knows where this goes, but I, I'm interested and we want to, I think, kind of foster connection uh, for the sake of the kingdom. So anyway, there it is. Uh, I will, has anybody unmuted? Uh, oh, Jason, dude, you're like in duo. That's really trippy. Are, are you, <laughs> you're in here twice. Yeah, I know. Isn't that something? I was actually watching on my mobile, then I realized I couldn't see everybody's, uh, the whole chat. So that's why I want to. All cool? right, all right, all right. So maybe can I ask Joshua, could you, <laughs> Joshua, can you unmute and just close us in a word of prayer? Would you mind? No, don't mind at all. Go ahead, bro. Uh, God in heaven, we come before you. Uh, incredibly thankful, God, for your incredible love for us, God, and how you provided, provided this opportunity for us to be able to gather together in your name and discuss this um, incredible new field that is uh, VR. AR. God is your people to be able to minister in the mm. best that we can uh, to the people around us, uh, whether that be Christian or seeking you. And we just praise you, Lord, for your incredible love and your guidance and bless us as we go out um, in our own fields and help us, Lord, in staying connected uh, one another as we can and building each other up. Um, all for your kingdom, God, is all for your glory. And we praise you, Lord, for your incredible love for us. And it's in Christ's name we praise things. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless. We'll be in touch with you guys. Thanks so much.